Hey guys, welcome to episode number 391. Today is Tuesday, so I have another tank tip for you. And today we're gonna do a little bit of an unboxing video and a care video on how to take care of axolotl eggs. Now, as you may or may not know, axolotls are an aquarium related creature um, that resembles a salamander, but lives underwater for its entire life. Um, they've got the cute little gills and they walk around and they're completely adorable. Um, not a whole lot of tropical fish keepers keep axolotls because they have different care requirements than other uh, aquarium related fish and creatures. Um, so I'm going to walk through uh, how I'm going to unbox this, how I'm going to keep these eggs and, uh, and we'll follow them as they sort of grow, progress and hatch. Um, but before we do that, I want to take a quick second and thank uh, a fellow YouTuber, Jules Axolotl, which is a play on words of axolotl, um, for uh, sending me these axolotl eggs. She has a great channel, go check her out. I'll put the link in the description below. She keeps axolotls almost exclusively. And it's funny, uh, she ran into one of my videos a year or so ago. Um, where I was setting up my 300 gallon turtle stock tank. She wanted a 300 gallon turtle stock tank or stock tank for her axolotls and it just so happened that she stumbled across my video, saw that it worked for turtles and so she decided that it would work equally well for axolotls and it appears that it did. So she's been um, you know keeping axolotls for a very long time um, she did a, a video on how to package these, the, the ones that you see right here, so you can go check out how these were packed. I'm gonna talk about how I unpack these and how I spread them out uh, across these containers. So let's get going. All right, so the first thing we need is some sort of Tupperware container, uh, glass, plastic, doesn't really matter. This happens to be the Rubbermaid 1.5 gallon. Um, Tupperware container. Uh, it's got a really good shape. There are no corners to it. Um, it's just deep enough where you know you can put the eggs in and spread them out. Um, and it's a large enough volume that you're not going to need to worry about needing to do um, daily or twice daily water changes on something like this. So that's the container that we're going to start with. Um, the next thing that we've got here is water. And uh, this actually came through my three-stage uh, carbon filter for my drip system in my fish room. So I know this water is good, um, but what I'm also going to do is add a couple products to this water um, just to ensure that um, everything is okay um, with the water itself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a couple drops of Seachem Prime. Um, you know, this is a, a great dechlorinator uh, and, you know, even though it's been through a carbon filter, you really just never know. I mean, actually, I need to change my carbon filters here pretty soon. So there is a chance that some of the chloramines are getting through that filter. Um, so it's, it's, always, it's always good to be double sure of something. And so in this case, I'm just going to add a few drops of Prime to that container and then the second thing I'm going to add is just a little bit of fluval cycle. Um, this is just a biologic starter colony and uh, you know this is a brand new container obviously it's not an aquarium that's been set up for a long period of time so um, you know it's it's something where we're going to need a, at least a temporary cycle in this container um, as we're hatching these uh, eggs and I am going to be doing frequent water changes on this so you know this this might not be the most effective way to go about inoculating a Tupperware container but I wanted to make sure I started out with clean fresh water and um, you know this was pr probably the easiest way to make sure that there is at least some semblance of a cycle or beneficial bacteria going on um, in this container. Now, I will be doing frequent water changes on this probably once a day or every other day. So any um, junk that builds up in the water, I will be removing that uh, promptly. 
All right, so let's get to the package itself. Um, this is a priority flat rate uh, envelope. Again, if you go check out Jules Ascolato, her channel, she shows exactly how she packed this. And the interesting thing to note on this package is what's written at the top. And it says fragile liquid H2O, live eggs, and then it gives the species name. And that's just, you know, um, a way to let the post office know uh, exactly what's inside it. The last thing you want is for the post office to be asking questions like, hey, I hear water sloshing around in here. Or, you know, hey, is this, is it like, what kind of live animal is this that you're sending through the mail? Like, you don't want it to be slowed down. And so just documenting everything is a great way um, to make sure that, you know, there are no questions and that your package is delivered promptly. Uh, the other important thing to note is that the USPS is probably the least strict when, you know, shipping live animals. And they're, they're least likely to... Uh, intercept or slow anything down but it's always good practice to uh to document exactly what you're sending through the mail uh, it makes everyone's life a little bit easier all right so i removed the outer layer of the packaging this is like surgery here we've got so many layers um this is just some stretch wrap to hold the packaging together what we've got next is some insulation and this is actually to keep the cold in. Um, one major difference between axolotls and your tropical fish is that they like cooler temperatures. And I'm actually going to put uh, a glove, some gloves on here while I'm working with this insulation because uh, it can get scratchy. You don't want to uh, irritate your skin. Um, so we'll just cut this open. And we'll see what's inside. All right, so right on top, what we see is a cold pack. And this was actually um, frozen. So this is a big difference between your tropical fish, which typically need a heat pack. Uh, axolotls need a cold pack when they're shipped. And so this has been in the mail for two days. It's still a little cold, um, but it's pretty much spent. And what we've got inside is a soda bottle or a water bottle, which is also wrapped in a fish bag. So double bagged in a sense. And uh, you'll see there's not a whole lot of air at the top there. They don't really need it when they're still in their egg form. And uh, this is, I think, the preferred method of shipping is to ship while they're eggs and, uh, and not while they're uh, live or juveniles. Uh, just seems like it's, it's a little bit easier to, uh, to get them to their destination. It doesn't take up as much space. Um, you don't need as large of a bag when you're shipping and so on and so forth. So the rest of this is just the back side of that packaging material. Double check to make sure there's nothing else in there. Set all of that aside, and then here we go. Here are the eggs. See if we can get a close up. The lighting in this room is not the best, um, but that's actually a good thing because, uh, besides the lower temperatures, one other thing that axolotls uh, enjoy is not as much light. Um, I guess they don't have eyelids, and so in a regular aquarium, they don't do so good under full bright light. Now, since this is a brand new container, I'm not adding it to an existing aquarium. Uh, I'm just going to dump the entire contents of this bottle into this Rubbermaid. Um, I don't want to go through the hassle of trying to separate eggs from the water that came in the bottle. Um, especially since I'm going to be doing water changes on this uh, fairly frequently. So I'm not exactly sure how many eggs are here. I would say it's probably a couple hundred if I was to guess. And I really don't know what the, uh, the hatch rate is uh, on these eggs. But 
there we go. That's the container. That's the container set up. And uh, let's see if we can get a close up on what's inside it. All right, guys. So here's my Axolotl egg starter kit. Again, we've got the 1.5 gallon Rubbermaid uh, Tupperware here. I've got three more of them just like it right here. And this will be important when these eggs start to hatch so I can separate them uh, as best as possible. They grow faster, they're less predatory when they're spread out as much as possible. So we've got a lot of surface area. We've got four containers, so hopefully that should help uh, with that process. Again, we've got the thermometer in here. I believe the ideal temperature is in the mid 60s. Um, it's a little bit warmer than that down here in the basement, so hopefully they're okay. Um, they are still eggs. And as you can see, there are two types of eggs. You'll see some are a little bit more developed, and um, you can see they're sort of uh, kidney bean shaped, or they look like tiny bananas. Those are definitely fertilized, and they're a little bit further along, and I believe they are an albino type. Um, that's what gives them that white color. And then the other is a black egg, which I believe comes from a normal um, I'm not exactly sure what the parents are. I'll have to go check um, Jules's message to see uh, exactly what the parents are. But we'll definitely be able to tell the difference between the two clutches based on one being albino and one not being albino. So all of the, these eggs are going to sit here in this container undisturbed. They don't really like water flow. Uh, I will be doing water changes on these guys very frequently. Uh, I've got more water containers here ready to go. Uh, I've got my cycle and my prime ready to go. And here we are. This is the start of the axolotl program. So hopefully I'm successful in crossing my fingers. Again, this is completely new territory for me, but I'm super excited. Definitely go check out Jules Axolotl on YouTube for more axolotl related content. So hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.